48 hours. That's how long properties have been burning in the capital Accra over the inability of the fire service to douse on Inferno. Sunday's fire, which started out as the regular uh, fire disasters in the country, has badly exposed Ghana's lack of preparedness to deal with fires, with personnel of the Ghana National Fire Service struggling uh, yet failing to bring an end to the flames. From black thick smoke hovering above the Makola market area to loud blasting sirens or fire tenders, the inefficiency and lack of retooling, one of Ghana's disaster management organizations rings hollow from the streets of the bustling market. Let's get you the very latest from Zungo Lane in Makola Markets. Uh, George Coining is our reporter on the ground. Uh, George, uh, good afternoon to you. Uh, listen, tell us what's happening. What do you see? What's going on? Thank you, Kemini. Thanks for having me. And uh, we're still at the you know, uh, incident scene. And it's been more than 48 hours. And the uh, fire service is still you know, struggling to really... I doubt this very fire. But what personnel are waiting is the fact that they want their seniors to reassess the situation and come up with a line of action. And so that is what everything is ongoing now. And so traders are also, you know, scattered around, waiting to see if they can salvage some of their words that have been, you know, uh, been in the building coming in. Mm, I see. George, when you look at, you know, where this fire began up until today, what are the traders saying about how it's never going out? So uh, they're, they're really concerned about it. Obviously, this is how they fend for themselves, and this is where they get their meals from. And so it's going to take you know, a long time for this very fire to be done. It's going to be a worry for them. But for them, if they feel if, if there are some materials that are, they can salvage, why, why, why would the personnel allow them to take that? But it's quite some sort of safety concerns now. And at times now, there are visible cracks on the building. It's a two-story building we have. There are cracks on them, and then there's... Service even fears that the, 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 the building might cave in or collapse. And so it's actually a, a security concern. And so all the traders here are not given the access to, you know, go to the building. So you can see police personnel uh, dotted around this place here trying to prevent them if they want to make that very And so that's what it is here. Security concern very high. And so everybody that wants to access this building uh, is actually being prevented from now. But traders are just hoping that they would be the last day that they can read out the very fire because if it protracts, it's really going to be a big issue. Mm, I see, but comparative, comparatively, how bad is the fire today? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm asking how bad the fire is today. Kemeni, as it stands now, we can only just see smoke being away, but you can actually also see that there's some sort of fire in there, but now, personnel here are just waiting for their seniors to come and assess because the very operation that they used yesterday would have to be different from today. So, if the seniors come in and we assess the, the situation, that's what they will just adopt the next line of action. Whether they're going to fight it from the back or they're going to face safe methods. That's what we, they are waiting for from their seniors to reassess the, the situation. I want to just take you uh, around around here. Yeah. So, tell me, I just want to take you around this place. So, this is how. You know, the situation is right now. You can see the smoke billowing from the building. And I don't know if you can see the visible cracks here. So that is what it is now. Some of the personnel here are waiting for their seniors to come to the scene. But that is it. It's a two-story building. And the smoke is still billowing. And traders are actually hoping that it will be doused today. And... Uh, there are also fire tenders here. I'm told that the mm. enforcement got here. And so that there's some traders here. You can see them. And so and these are the owners of the building. The Chinese woman here and the man. These are the owners of the building. Okay, so this is what the scene looks like. The situation report here. And that's the building. The visible cracks here as well. Mm. So that's it. Can I talk to you? Can, I talk to you? can we like talk to the owner of the building? So... The Accra Metropolitan. Can I talk to you, please? Very well. Uh, George, who. 
Don't this very don't, don't close it. land was illegally acquired, and then after that situation has been controlled, you will be prosecuted. Me, I know there's a me, no, Yeah, that, that's the concern we got. So, what do you say to things like? What do you say to concerns like? Me, me, no, no English. No English. Yes, so but also, how do you take this very incident? How, as, as the owner of this very building, how do you take this this, this incident? No, I understand. You don't understand. Okay, yes. like she said, she doesn't understand. English. But uh, the consensus from the AM base that uh, there was some sort of illegalities surrounding this acquisition of this land. And so after everything has been, you know, settled, they'll try and then prosecute these owners. And so that is what the AMA is also saying regarding this very incident. Like I rightly mentioned, traders are waiting for this to be doused, and maybe life will actually bounce back to normal. Mm. George, we'll leave it here. Thank you so much. Now, the Makola Zongolin uh, Inferno is not the only one we've seen in this country or in the capital city. About 50 fire outbreaks have been recorded in less than a week in the country. And uh, Accra and Kaswa have recorded the most fires, destroying properties running into millions of Ghana cities. Residential apartments, markets and shops have all been affected. It was a Herculean task for personnel from the Ghana National Fire Service to contain most of the inferno within a minimum time frame because equipment deployed to the fire scenes were obsolete, virtually rendering the service uh, and the servicemen ineffective. Uh, the last time the Ghana National Fire Service was uh, retooled by the state was during uh, former President John Dramani Mahama's tenure in 2014, where 80 additional uh, fire tenders were procured. Uh, let's have a quick conversation uh, on the back of all of these, uh, you know, all of, all of the information we've had so far. Uh, with me in the studio is Alex King Nati, who speaks for the Ghana National Fire Service, uh, AD01, uh, correctly so. I, I saw you, you know, you shook your head when I uh, talked about the retooling and the fact that, you know, 2014 was probably the last time that you were retooled. It, that is correct, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's been a while we've been retooled, but mm. um, the government has made a commitment okay. that um, they'll be um, retooling us. We are actually expecting some fire tenders. Um, I've been informed that mm. uh, plans are far advanced for retooling. So we are hoping that it will come soon and we believe that it will be coming very we'll soon. We look forward to that. But what could be causing the many fires we are seeing, especially in Accra? Well, um, I would attribute it to people's nonchalant attitude towards fires. Um, at the Makola area, for instance, we have an active fire station with a vibrant fire safety team that go around to educate. But the, some of the things they tell us is very unfortunate. They go in some of these fire, fire um, market women will tell them, don't disturb me. I've not sold anything. I'm not mm -hmm. ready for anything. And they, it's as if they feel fires are far away from them. Also, the fact that people are failing to draw a fine balance between their safety and their security. Everyone seems to be more afraid of the thief than they are of the fire. Mm. So you realize that in our homes, in the shops, people are fortified their shops with a lot of padlocks, with a lot of burglar proofs, with a lot of CCTV cameras to catch thieves. But what are they using to catch the fire? Mm. Um, if they invest in um, early fire detection systems like smoke detectors, um, when the fire starts at the incipient stages, it will be able to notify them that there's an impending danger mm. so that um, quickly, um, measures you can call on us to arrive. But when you don't have um, early fire detection systems like that, the fire will get fully developed, spread before you even notice and call on us. And then by that time, it would have spread and became, uh, become uncontrollable. I see. I want to talk about the Makola Zongo Lane fire, which has been burning f for the last 48 hours. Now we are counting into the next 24 hours. Um, what could be going on there? So um, there's a lot going on. Okay. Um, as um, uh, Echo rightfully said, there are visible cracks on the building. Um, on Monday, parts of the building caved in. Even this morning, other parts of the building also caved in. So there's a security, the safety concern for both firefighters and civilians alike that um, if we commit men, most of these shops are closed. So due to the spread, 
it's difficult to get through to the seat of fire. Mm. Ideally, we should be able to go in with our cutting tools, breaking tools, breaking and fight the fire. But then due to the unpredictability of the strength of the building, if we commit more men to go in, mm. we, might be able, we might be facing a major uh, casualty rate. So we are using other measures to fight the fire. But unfortunately, due to the lack of uh, safety precautions or lack of safety consideration uh, taken into the building of this place, it becomes a one way in, one way out thing. So there are no alternative routes to help us fight the fire. Mm. Also, the fact that there's a lot of fuel in the fuel is not only petrol or gas, okay. but then anything that can burn. So for fire to happen, there are three things that come together in its rightful proportion mm. to start a fire. Um, we have fuel, we have oxygen, and we have heat. Oxygen is all around us. And so with the collapse of some of the building, it has made room for more oxygen into the fire. Also, the fact that there's right. a lot of... Um, I see. But, but is it not also the case that uh, you do not have the ladder to be able to reach the fire? It's not about the ladder. Because you realize that even if you have the ladder, it's about how the people have overpacked the things inside there. Because you realize that we even try fighting a fire, but they've blocked the windows of these warehouses with foams, with mattresses, with all the items that they are selling. So even if we try fighting a fire, even if we should pitch a ladder and we have to fight the fire, mm. you would still not be able to get the water through to the seat of fire because the, the, the path to be able to fight the fire has been curtailed as a result of the mm. items that they've used to block these, these ways. I so see. we, yes, we've always mentioned that, you know, we, we need support, but then again, we, are, we, have, we have capable officers. Our chief fire officer himself is on the ground. Our sessional heads are on the ground. And we have quality man, manpower. Trust me, but for the uh, professionalism of the Ghana National Fire Service, we'll be looking at a much more bigger disaster than this. There are banks so how around. long are we expecting this to continue? So as at yesterday, um, 10 p.m., um, we've officially...